Well, today I'm coming to you from south of Tucson, Arizona, and I figured I'd show you something that's long and hard and uh, full of hellfire, actually. Uh, I am at the Titan Missile Museum, which has a decommissioned intercontinental ballistic missile here, which is kind of cool. It's something you can't see while you're up in Canada, so definitely was on my to-do list, and we're going to check it out on the tour today. So, the Air Force knew they had to protect the crew and their missile from that nearby nuclear strike so that they could launch their missile. So, here's what they did. From this threshold on, this is where you would expect to survive a nearby nuclear blast. This is the hardened area. These walls are four feet thick. The ceiling and the floor are five feet thick. There's literally a force to rebarb in all this concrete from the size of my wrist to the size of my finger holding it all together. The outside form of the concrete is a quarter inch steel plate, mud welded together and grounded, and this is to keep out the electromagnetic pulses that are going to accompany a nearby nuclear device. message you got coming. It could be a jest, it could be a weather message, it could be a world situation, or it could be we're going to world. We're going to World War III has started. And so what we just heard is we're going to get a launch order. Okay? So as soon as you start hearing that, you're going to open up your book. Commander to open up her book, Deputy Commander open up his book, write down the 35 letters and characters that you heard. When it was over with, the announcer would say, I will repeat, and they will exchange books. They will hear the message again. They will make sure that they had written down the same message and when they agree they had, they knew then it was in order for them to go take their locks off that lake, off that same. The first thing we got to do is uh, make sure that this message is coming from the only person who's qualified to use nuclear weapons. And that would be the president. president. We have to make sure this message is coming from him. The first two letters on that message is going to tell us which of these cards to take out. Say it was Whiskey Delta. We would take that card out, open it up, inside would be another little card they call the cookie. Whis Whiskey Delta, the first two letters, and then five or more letters and characters after that. They would compare that with the second line. If they matched completely, they knew they had an order from the President of the United States that so we are at war and we're, we have been launched on and we're going to go and start launching our missiles. Next thing on computer out of that message is the time of launch. You're not going to launch all 54 of them at the same time. You're going to compute the launch. Deputy Commander is going to write the clock, the time on this clock. Now everybody knows what time they're going to launch their missile. The next thing I compute out of that, miss, uh, that message for the first time ever on the premises is the Firefly valve code. You're going to read that to the VMAT. You're going to put the code in, push the button, turn the great light. The light's going to turn green. Look, you say, Commander, our missile is ready to be launched. The next thing we take out of that red safe are the keys to start the launch. We don't push buttons. We put keys. You would put your key there. The Deputy Commander would put his key over here. These keys are, to, are, uh, are, are spring loaded to the opposition. They have to be turned within five seconds, or they have to be turned within two seconds and held for five seconds. So, you can't do it alone because they're seven and a half feet apart, neither can I. Commander, put your hand on the left hand on the key, please. I want you to count down three, two, one. When you say after one, you say launch, and then turn the keys to the right and hold until I tell you to release. It's all yours. Three, two, one. Turn and hold. Four, three, two, one. You can sit back and relax. Once you have started, you cannot stop. If there's no oops button. It's like shooting a rifle. The bullet's coming out. You can't stop it. There's no way. First green light is launch enabled. All systems are go for the launch. Next light is batteries activated. Two 28-volt direct current batteries on board are now being charged for the first time. 
28 seconds later, we're going to get an ABS light telling us the missile has switched to internal power. That 760 ton silo door is now starting to open. We can't feel it or hear it, but it's going to break those tipsies. When it breaks those tipsies, this alarm's going to go off and we'll know that it did go through the open. Now we have silo saw. Guidance go. The guidance system is now in control of the missile. We will no longer accept any more commands from the McGann. Fuel and oxidizer are being poured in those first two in that first stage engine. As soon as they touch, they're going to ignite. We're going to have a huge fire in the silo. We're going to have a huge fire in the silo. The engines have ignited, and four seconds later, we have liftoff. The missile is gone. The crew would never hear or feel it go. The time we turned those keys and the missile was gone, it was 58 seconds. 60 to 6,000 6, miles or so from here in about 30 to 35 minutes. Target 2 is going to disappear in a blinding thermal nuclear explosion. <laughs>